Hello everyone, welcome back to 10 Minute Trends, the video series where we give you a few fun and actionable insights into the world of business and marketing and advertising. This is the August 2023 edition. I cannot believe it's already almost the end of the summer. Crazy. Let's not go there yet. I'm Jackson Richards. As always, I'm joined by Megan Conahan, EVP at Direct Agents. And let's get right into it. We have yeah. three topics for you as usual. Um, okay, so the first is, let's talk about what is going on with the economy and, and consumer sentiment. Of course, these are things that are have big implications in the world of, of marketing and advertising. Yeah. So it's, it's important to stay current with what is going on in the, in the macro economy. Yeah, so right now, really positive <clears throat> feelings out there. A lot of people feeling like there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Brands and marketers are feeling increasingly optimistic. So there are four kind of key things that we're attributing this to. So uh, one, the Federal Reserve said they're no longer predicting recession, which is really great news. Um, two, a recent FTI consulting report predicts that this year online retail is going to grow 10% year over year, which is you know double digits. That's pretty huge. Um, the third thing, uh, consumer optimism is at an all time high. It's the highest it's been since 2021. And then the last piece is just all the great Q2 like earning reports that we've seen. Meta, Amazon, Walmart, Google, Shopify, pretty much all major platforms reported really like pretty good growth, which yep. everyone was really excited about. So overall, consumers are spending more dollars, which is great. And then brands and marketers are spending more to try to capture that demand. The, the flip side of this coin is that consumers did spend the first half of 2023 really being worried about the economy, their own economic safety and security. And so a couple of good headlines it's gonna it's gonna take more than that to look, get them to like loosen their purse strings a little bit so we're still seeing consumers spending but at the same time they have a recessionary mindset right and so we're we're finding it very interesting that we have to walk this line a little bit more um but that's been one of the things that have really also increased adoption of buy now pay later so in the Q2 earnings reports from PayPal the CEO said that they've actually seen a really big increase in buy now pay later and not just overall buy now, pay later, which has seen an increase, but they've been seeing a 25 to 30% increase in first time use of buy now, pay later. So people who've never used buy now, pay later in the past are now using it. So consumers are still really leaning into flexible payment options um, as they're starting to feel a little bit better about the economy. Yeah, at Direct Agents, we're obviously, as an agency, we are very close to uh, the marketing decisions that brands are making yep. from a strategic standpoint, from a budgetary standpoint. And we've definitely seen that kind of roller coaster throughout the year, mm -hmm. that, that big pullback earlier in the year, and then the, the big uh, return to investing in the, the last few months. Yep. And that is often a, as a response to um, the consumer mindset, as you mentioned, but also as you know, the consumer mindset changes, Consumers make purchase decisions in different ways. And yep. we, we found that that new Wonderman Thompson study that talked about um, some of the ways in which consumers today are making their purchase decisions, what types of products they buy, what types of brands they, they choose from, how they make those decisions. W what did we see there? Yeah, so this was really interesting. And like you said, it, it'll change, obviously, as we go to next year. But for a recent report looking at um, essentially why consumers would buy this year, there were four main things, right? There were several things that they, they listed, but the four main ones in order were consumers to buy from a brand would look for a better price, fast delivery, or no, free, de sorry, better price, free delivery, fast and convenient shipping, and then free returns, right? So that's kind of in order. We already talked a little bit about the price thing. We've seen that. We saw it with Prime Day. Um, during Prime Day, half of the Amazon Prime buyers essentially would spot check prices against Walmart and Target to make sure that they had the lower price. That's a no-brainer going into this year, especially Q4. We won't, we won't harp on that. But I want to talk about the, the later three. So uh, free delivery, fast and convenient delivery, and then free returns, right? And specifically, those are the three things outside of price that are going to make a consumer buy. Even Amazon in their Q2 numbers said that they are essentially attributing their growth to the the investments that they've made in fast and free delivery. And they said they have a initiative to double the number of same day fulfillment centers uh, within the US, which is just going to continue to kind of expedite their growth. 
So what does this mean for brands? Um, for brands in 2023, many of them refocus on profitability. And a lot of times what that meant was cutting free shipping, cutting free returns, cutting, you know, increasing ship times, right? And obviously those are things people and brands had to do um, in, in the, sh the short term, but I think it's time to really relook at that as we go into Q4, because if you are not the low cost provider, you are charging for, for shipping and you are going to say you'll get something to somebody in two weeks, it's just not going to cut it, right? You might get your return customers, but to get a net new customer to sign on, to buy with you for the very first time when they're in that recessionary mindset, it's just not, it's going to be much harder, right? So think through that when you're thinking about Q4 promotions and H2 promotions, think through, you know, offering free shipping, rethinking about some of those strategies there. The other thing is that if you're a brand who sells on your .com and on Amazon and your .com doesn't have free shipping, fast and free or fast and convenient shipping free returns, Amazon does. And you're going to see more and more dollars flow to Amazon, flow to Walmart, flow to marketplaces and less essentially to your .com, which is one of the reasons we're really big proponents of looking at marketing in more of an omni-channel way, right? You can't just think of, oh, I'll have social media spend and attribute it to my .com because that's not the case. That's not how consumers behave. Right. You really need to look at how your overall marketing is driving overall sell through across the board. Yeah, we definitely look at profitability, revenue, sell through across all channels. Exactly. And, and ultimately that approach has, has tended to lead to, to higher uh, exactly. net growth. Last, one of the things that we like to talk about here is recent releases or updates in the world of MarTech platforms, things like that. Typically we, we tend to focus on consumer marketing, but today we have an update on the B2B side, which is, which is really exciting. Uh, Megan, what have you seen here that, that you thought was interesting? Yeah, I'm really excited about this. And, and we do a lot in B2B. Right. We don't talk about it enough, yeah. I don't think. So this is a really fun one. So Intuit recently launched um, their, their media network, essentially, called SMB Media Labs. And what it is is it gives brands uh, access to over their 6 million QuickBook customers that you can activate across all digital platforms, social media, CTV, audio, video, et cetera. Um, so there's two reasons I'm really excited about this. One, with the depreciation of the cookie, more brands are looking for reliable sources of first party data. This is that. And two, just in the B2B space, we know there are not a lot of great, scalable, reliable, accurate B2B data sources. Right. And Intuit, who obviously you can see that they might go beyond just using their QuickBooks data to sure. some of their other properties. Um, this is going to be a real kind of game changer if you're targeting SMB. So if you're right. A B2B marketer, if you're targeting SMBs, even if not, there are obviously implications for you. I would look into this. I would test it out currently as a managed service, um, but it's just a matter of time before it goes to self-serve to allow more flexibility for, for marketers to test it a little bit easier. Yeah, that'll be exciting and, and something that we are definitely going to explore on yeah, our end. Absolutely. Okay, that was our three overarching topics for, for this month. Thank you all for joining us again. Enjoy the rest of your summer. Thank you, Megan. Thank and you. we will be back again soon.